Hi there, it's Trenna from John's Furniture Repair and we're here with another nice little project in the shop and it's gonna be a complete refinish with some repairs. So let me show you some details. Okay, so this is a desk and uh, it's had some good life lived in it and you can see the middle drawer here is kind of hanging. Um, it's just that the dovetail joints have let go in there. So re-gluing drawers is on the list. And as well, we had a bit of a accident. Someone smushed the handle. Uh, not quite sure what's going on there, but we'll be able to fix that. And they are quite pretty handles. They've got like a, a little motif there. So we'll shine those up nicely. And this thing just needs a good refinish. It's actually really beautiful walnut uh, underneath all of this yucky old shellac it's got some water damage um, these i see quite often and i don't usually take them out because um, the person who used to have this desk would have been a relative and they would have stuck their cigarette hanging off the edge here or a pipe and it would have slowly burned into the wood here and uh, that's more about the age and the character of the the piece and the memories so i kind of like these marks but we will be getting out the watermarks and the rings, like this guy up here. That'll probably just come out with the refinish. And then really showcasing the beautiful natural walnut on this. No stain color, just back to the original, which is um, a natural color. And we'll have to probably do a little bit of tinting on the legs because there'll be a different type of walnut, uh, probably a butternut and it's got a few little veneer chips going on right here. Uh, the finish is pretty worn, so you can see it's kind of flaking off in a lot of areas like that. And this desk has a backside completely finished as well, so just a bit more surface area to work on. And just general dings and scrapes, and uh, a little bit of dirty drawers and stuff, so we'll, We'll refinish the insides of these as well and uh, just get it back to a beautiful uh, little piece. So let's take it apart and get it going. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300-year-old hand-carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna, and this is John's Furniture Repair. Okay, so I've got all the drawers uh, handles off here and this is a kind of interesting um, desk because the uh, it's got like a fake frame that in between the drawers and the sides. So they've just attached it to the top drawer, and then it looks like there's a frame in between in between the two drawers, but it's just part of the actual drawer. So that's an interesting feature, and it looks like um, some of the drawers have been repaired. The dovetails have some pegs or nails, probably nails, in the sides and that's not supposed to be how we do. But if they're not loose, I won't take it apart. But I've noticed some of them, I think it was this one here, it is loose. So it's not just the center drawer that needs to be re-glued. Might just be that one actually. So we'll re-glue a couple drawers there. And in the meantime, while I've got them all apart, I'll be able to take out this grimy drawer bottom, which is pretty, and uh, unusual, you know, usually get ugly wood for drawer bottoms, just like birch or something cheap, but they've put a nice um, walnut uh, piece in there. But I, uh, what am I trying to say? I am trying to say they put a nice veneered walnut, walnut veneered plywood in the base of these. So it's an extra um, expense that the company put in to make it a little more fancy. Got one, and it looks like I'm just gonna like they've even got a nail going right through this. You can see all the nails right there. 
coming through those dovetails and one going right through the runner here. If this starts to pop, that's gonna gouge your side of your rail on the inside of the cabinet. So these will cause issues in the future, if not now. Okay, so those are all fairly loose. They've also nailed the base here, so I'm gonna pop that loose as well. So there we go, we got a bunch of nails, which somebody thought was a great idea and probably worked for the time being, but will cause issues in the future. So I'm just gonna pop these through. And we can just pull them all out and throw them right in the trash because they're not antique nails, they're just finishing nails, finishing wire nails. Good. So that's all clear and luckily not a lot of damage to the dovetails themselves. So we'll be able to glue that back nicely. And the other side has the same thing going on. So we'll pop that out too. Okay, so everything is loose. And uh, this gives me the chance to really clean up this drawer bottom so that, and I could probably strip this off the piece too just to make myself have an easier situation okay so inside here not so good we've got a lot of uh, veneer that's flaked away here they probably when they pulled it apart uh, a bit of the veneer was stuck on the inside of these dovetails with glue still and that just kind of flaked right off so, is this the only one that's like that is my question. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because here's the problem here. We've got two layers, uh, an underlayment and a top veneer missing from this dovetail in here, here, and here. That's going to create issues for the joints not being tight enough. Your uh, dovetails that fit are going to have a gap right here. So that's not going to be a, a tight fit at all. And then same thing on this side. One, two, three out of the four dovetails are missing uh, some major depth here. So that's really compromising the strength of this drawer. So what I'm going to do is um, it, put a couple of layers of veneer back on and of course make it look better because that looks pretty nasty and uh, glue down what is left here that one we can just glue back down but these I'll just do some splices in and uh, I think I have some pretty thick underlayment that I can put here
Hey everyone, I just want to share a number one tip when you're fixing veneer and you're uh, putting it on your piece when you fix it. Hey, don't forget to remove the green tape before you glue it down or else you'll just have to take it all off and do it over again. So that's my number one tip for the day. So I ended up taking apart all of the drawers because they were just easy to tap apart and I always kind of tap things to see if they're easy to come apart and they are. So we have them all here uh, sanded, stripped and, and ready for re-gluing and the only one that we don't have ready is the one that I accidentally uh, left the green tape underneath the veneer that I glued down so had to peel that off and redo all that glue up so that'll be the last one I do but I did a little test on what kind of glue they used here and it is hide glue so I've got the hide glue warming up in my little crock pot here so it's ready to go and uh, let's glue up most of these drawers I guess four out of five drawers we can get glued up
Okay, so we've got this all sanded and I did steam it you saw there. So we got a lot of the dents and scratches out in the sanding process, but we still got a couple of these watermarks here, 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 and there's one down here as well. So we are going to uh, use some oxalic acid, which I actually mixed today uh, for a door we're working on. So that's nice. Don't have to remix it. And it's just, I usually put in about a cup of water in here with two tablespoons of the oxalic acid crystals. And if you don't know where to find those, I think you can get them on Amazon because that's where I ordered these ones from. So just search those out yourself. I don't have a source that I use all the time because I buy it once and it lasts like 15 years. So anyways, you can't just do one spot with this stuff. So we're gonna put it on the whole bit and you might be able to see this mark disappear right away. Sometimes that happens. The cigarette uh, or this mark won't go anywhere because it's a burn. But if you just keep your eye on that one mark right there, you might be able to see it go right away. Hopefully, that's my hope. If not, then it'll just be there and we'll have to just kind of work around it. Don't really have any other way of removing something other than um, tricking your eye with the finishing when you have something that won't, won't uh, come out with bleach or anything like that. So I don't need to get the whole surface too, too wet, but just enough so that you've got the acid on every surface because it will bleach the wood a little bit and you don't want to have one area looking way different than the other. And if you don't go over the side, then you don't have to do that. Okay, so it's the next morning and I was gonna wash them last night, but I forgot, so I gotta do it this morning. Um, here is the mark right here. It's almost gone, but it's still a little bit there. I did it twice last night, do two coats. So um, it is what it is. I'm just gonna deal with the rest. I've got a really big bucket of fresh water here now. And I'm just gonna keep washing this, the crystals off and rinsing my rag. Cause you do not want to breathe these acid crystals. You'll know right when you start sanding that you didn't get it off. And it is helpful to have the fest tool because it sucks up most of what comes off of the pieces. But still, this is a necessary step. And I can see how everything turned out too when I get it wet. So I can still see there's pretty good mark right there. A little lighter than it was. You really didn't get huge change on that, but it was worth a try. Okay, I finally got this thing all sanded and ready for stain. And then I decided I'm not going to stain it because I don't want to go any darker than I have to on this piece. I think it was pretty natural to begin with. Maybe a tiny little bit of tint, which we'll have to do as well on the legs because there were so many repairs. I just did a little bit of lacquer thinner on the leg here, or actually alcohol, sorry, to look at how the putty is uh, looking with the, the wood and how the different woods 
are looking together. So obviously the drawer fronts have a walnut veneer and the frame is a poplar or a birch. Uh, so we'll have to do a little bit of tinting with that, but I'm okay if there's a little var variation in wood on this piece. I kind of want it to have a more natural look. The top is so orange, but I think it is walnut. It might've just been a very interesting color of walnut, but it does scream walnut to me, so I'm gonna stick with that. I could be completely wrong. You can make your own mind up. Anyways, uh, so this is just gonna get cleaned off, dusted, and we'll throw a couple clear coats on everything and see where we need to do some work. So we've got the first coat of lacquer on. I did two coats on the top and it looks pretty good, but it's a little disjointed in color, uh, meaning to me that the highs are too light and the darks are too dark. The contrasts are kind of against each other. And uh, I'm just gonna bring everything kind of into the closer tone everywhere, but not completely matching because I don't mind having a little bit of variation in the wood. So I'm gonna be using Mohawk's uh, medium brown walnut. This is one of my most uh, used colors that I use. And I'm mainly gonna be hitting um, this piece on these doors, this piece here, and a little bit of the frame, including the legs everywhere. I'm also gonna hit the top. Uh, a lot of our little putty marks are a little more gray. So I'm gonna be adding a little bit of color with a, um, it's kind of an orangey color, but it's called warm oak. And I'm just gonna touch that before I hit it with the toner. The toner will blend those in. And we did a lot of putty on the legs, so that'll help those all blend in as well. We still have our very lovely um, cigarette burn, or maybe it was a pipe, who knows? But anyways, that's part of the piece now. And the mark here that we tried to get out looks pretty nicely faded, so I'm not upset with that. The back, again, just needs that um, work with the toner to bring things in. It's not as bleached out as the drawer fronts, so you've got a little bit more uh, color back here, but we'll just bring everything into the same zone. And then a couple more coats of lacquer.
And there she is, all done. All the drawers fixed, all the nicks and dents, and boo-boos of the years reversed, and the character kept, and it's ready for the next 100 years. And you can see so much more of that beautiful walnut shining through. And look at the difference on the top. Look at how beautiful that is. It's a really nice book match. Looks like two pieces of veneer. Or sorry, maybe four. Anyways, nice job with the book matching from whoever made this. And we've got our cigarette slash pipe burn here. And every single drawer was re-glued and refinished. And it's nice and smooth and clean inside. And we did a re-patina on the handles because they were kind of beat up and we had to uh, reshape a couple of them and repair some metal work. And I'm sorry, I forgot to get that on film. And all of our dovetails are nice and tight now. Re-glued with hide glue. Really, really pretty drawer bottoms. So it's kind of a gift when you open it up. And all of our legs repaired. A little bit of tint with the medium walnut. And I did do a little bit of raw umber as well in some spots just to keep the red down a bit. A little bit darker back here to see, but the back is all nicely cohesive as well, looking really good. It's a really pretty little desk and a nice size too. So thank you for joining me on this one, guys. I really appreciate you watching these videos. If you want to support the channel and you find these videos helpful, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below the video. And uh, be sure to check out our other restorations. Cheers.